Hey everybody, Juan here, and today we're taking a look at one of my most anticipated phones of 2012, the Nokia Lumia 920 on AT&T. Alright, so let's get this box open. Uh, you're instantly greeted by a gorgeous uh, Nokia Lumia 920. And uh, also they've got the no texting while driving sticker. Uh, if, if I can, with a quick aside here. I would definitely recommend checking out that campaign. Um, I really want to give props to AT&T because I think it's an important thing to talk about because texting and driving is a dangerous and silly thing to do and I would really hope that you guys stop it. Just to see what else is in this box here, you've got your little handy dandy Nokia SIM card tool. You've got some other Nokia quick quick start guide, some welcome to AT&T literature. So we've got a little handy micro USB cable. And then the AC adapter is this really pretty sort of uh, kind of cylindrical uh, shape here. I've been liking the new look for Nokia where there a lot of their sort of accessories and devices are starting to look, you know, really organic and smooth. And uh, I think it's a it, I think it's a really cool design area for Nokia to explore. So here comes my favorite part, guys. We're going to peel this sucker off. Try not to. And I apologize. I, if I'm going to keep doing these sort of hands on videos. I really do need to get myself a manicure. Oh, and then uh, on the back of the device, you've got this sort of helpful, handy guide of what all of the different ports and buttons on the device are, are for. Uh, of course, the micro USB, dedicated camera button, Windows phone, I love you, dedicated camera button, that's awesome. Android manufacturers, dedicated camera button, WTF, STFU, GTFO, come on. Uh, we've got your power button, volume button. This is all very similar if you've uh, used any of the, the previous Nokia Lumias like the 900, um, that uh, everything is on a right-hand side. Uh, headphone, headphone jack is right there at the top with the SIM card tray right there. And we'll show you the micro USB uh, stereo speaker output down at the bottom. And uh, what's different about this, uh, we actually have exposed torque screws on the bottom of the device, unlike the uh, Lumia 900, which did not and only had the mono speaker output down at the bottom. I I'm curious to see uh, as this device ages, if maybe that means we'll have easier support for things like replacing the screen, that uh, it won't necessarily mean that you've got to ship the entire unit back. Maybe you could do the repair locally. And then we'll peel this off here for that Carl Zeiss. Ah, look at that. Let's see if I can get it to catch the light. Right there, fling, fling, fling. There. So let's see, it's the Carl Zeiss 26 millimeter equivalent F2.0 image stabilized uh, lens element there, which is really exciting to see. Uh, I'm sure I'll be sending up a lot of samples of that on yourtechreport.com, so definitely check that out. And the dual LED flash uh, for those nighttime shots where the low light capabilities of this uh, of this phone aren't going to get you done. Okay, so I've taken just a couple minutes to put in my user details. I didn't do that all on video because that's kind of boring to watch. So firing this puppy up now, and I've switched over to a stylus so that you don't have to look at my horribly unmanicured uh, fingernails there. And we are greeted to live tiles uh, in, a, in a big difference from the 900 or the Windows Phone 7.5. There is no longer that weird off-center uh, wasted space on the right-hand side, uh, which is pretty great. Now on these live tiles, we now have the new layout where we've got the large grid, the four by four grid, and then certain uh, apps can be pinned with this sort of double wide grid, especially for your photos where it kind of makes sense to have that information uh, sort of stretched out a little bit more. And as, and just a, a jump to the right gets you to uh, your full list of apps. I don't have anything really loaded up on this right now aside from SkyDrive. Uh, AT&Ts are sort of bolded here in orange with the code scanner, the family map, AT&T nav, AT&T radio, and the Uverse live TV. And then you can always go into your store to check out some of the other offers. The Nokia collection, I would highly recommend grabbing everything from there when you set up your, your Lumias. Uh, the screen response on this thing is glorious to behold. Uh, Nokia has made a big stink out of making the refresh rate, out of improving the refresh rate to an incredible degree. And it really does show in person where uh, it's kind of like the difference between going uh, on a regular monitor to a gaming monitor, how that response seems to make everything a little more fluid. You get that effect here on the screen for the Lumia 920. The uh, Nokia Drive, Nokia Maps, Nokia Transit, uh, the Cinemagraph, the Smart Shoot, the Creative Studio, all of these are great additions to this device. And I'm kind of curious as to why they weren't included on the device just out of the box. 
um, they are that much of a benefit. And so ushering in this new era of high resolution screens and dual core processors, the, the response was already very fluid on Windows Phone. It's just been taken to an entirely new level where performance has improved significantly. Uh, so making the move from Windows Phone 7.5 to Windows Phone 8, they have changed the underlying architecture. And I think it definitely shows in a performance improvement. And it should also make coding for the platform just a little bit easier. Uh, I, I'm hoping we'll see now more apps targeted for Windows Phone 8. Uh, the, the app ecosystem was growing on Windows Phone 7, but I think this will help, uh, help take it to another level. As always, we've got this glorious sort of side panel layout for app navigation. I'm here just in the ESPN app right now. And then at any time, let's see if I remember how, if I hit the back button, we now have the same multitasking uh, card style layout that we had before, uh, rest in peace, WebOS. And then let's go back to system settings. Really right now, I'm even just having fun just navigating the UI because performance on this is just so smooth and the screen is pretty fantastic. So I'm really happy to see Nokia continuing with this design aesthetic. Uh, it, this has been a constant evolution since the Nokia N8 and it's just gotten more organic and more pleasant as each iteration of the phone has, has sort of been delivered. Uh, with these sort of graceful tapers. This is the 900, then moving to the 920. Uh, everything's smooth. It feels like this was grown. It doesn't feel like it was machined or built. You know, like there's probably some Nokia tree out there where these things grow organically. Uh, compared to the 900, this is bigger in almost every single dimension. So lining up the bottoms of these two phones, you can see the 920 is just a little bit taller uh, than the 900 was. We've got a couple millimeters there. And then uh, if I kind of hold this out there, it's a little harder to see from, from this camera angle, but it's almost exactly the same width. But then as we look at the thickness between the two devices, the 920 is just a little bit portlier than the 900 was. And it's definitely a bit more curved, whereas the 900 was a little flatter. All right. So another exciting addition to the Windows Phone lineup is now Windows Phone support NFC, that wireless radio that Apple fans don't get to play with. And uh, to see uh, whether or not this NFC implementation is actually universal, uh, I've got my glorious little Nexus 7 and I've got it set up for my contact info. And just to see if we can share between one device and another using the standard NFC protocol. So if I hold these two devices, it's going to be hard with two big touch screens not to touch a whole bunch of extra stuff. Um, if I touch the backs, uh, <laughs> all right, and someone is sharing a contact with you, except, and we'll save that. That is awesome. Now, I know that there are other apps that can kind of simulate that functionality, like bump is always brought up. You can kind of bump your phones together and then Bluetooth takes over. But having a hardware radio, which is a standard protocol across two completely different operating systems that can share that functionality without needing another standalone app to kind of replicate that functionality is a huge feature in my opinion. And who knows iPhone users that maybe with the iPhone 5S or the iPhone 6, you too will have the benefit of having this wonderful little radio, which is highly customizable at your disposal too. Because that is something I'm gonna be really excited to play with because Nokia's new connection manager is gonna be built on NFC, especially for a lot of their wireless accessories. Uh, say you've got a Bluetooth music dock. Instead of going to Bluetooth and turning it on and setting up the passcode and scanning for devices and pairing and then listening to music, you're gonna walk over to your music dock you're gonna tap it with your phone. NFC is gonna take over, set up everything for you, and then you're off listening to music. That is sublime simplicity and something that you can't replicate without that kind of hardware functionality. You know, that to me is the definition of an it just works ecosystem. And one of the things we're most excited about this phone is the camera. Um, not only the Carl Zeiss lens element and the fast aperture, but the Nokia PureView technology is on board. And uh, we also have, for the first time ever in a smartphone, a hardware optical image stabilizer where the lens element will sort of float to help compensate 
for the jittery hand-holding nonsense that you go through when you're shooting your smart smartphone videos. Uh, I can I can say from the short period of time that I've had to play with this phone that it definitely helps tame all of that extra movement when you're moving the phone around. And they've also kept one of my favorite design features of the Lumia 900 and that the speakers are on the bottom. And this allows for a much louder, much clearer media, ringtone, speakerphone kind of environment. Not to mention that they put in some honking great speakers. So especially compared to the anemic speakerphone on a device like the Galaxy Nexus, uh, well, let's just take a listen. I mean, that's just substantially better performance and you're not having to do that weird like I'll cup my hand around the side of the back of the phone to try and get sound to reflect back into my face. If I have one complaint about the audio layout though on the uh, Windows Phone 8 environment, this isn't a Nokia problem, it's a problem with the OS, is that there's still only one unified volume control for the entire operating system. So if you're listening to quiet music and you've got your volume turned up really high, then when you get a notification or an alert, it's gonna come in full blast and kind of blow your ears out. So folks, it's time. It's time to consider Microsoft as the number three smartphone manufacturer. I think they've earned it. I think they're due. Those of you looking for a device which is really simple to use, a lot of the elements that I like about iOS's simplicity are gonna be found here on Windows Phone 8. Those of you looking at an Android device and thinking, I like the customization options of an Android device, live tiles are gonna satisfy that as well. Um, Microsoft has found a really unique middle of the way niche between these two operating systems. And uh, really the only thing holding people back at this point might be the app situation, but most of the major app services that I use, or, uh, except for a few Google apps, of course, you're gonna find in the Windows phone environment. So when you're shopping your next smartphone, I would highly recommend picking one of these up and playing with it. It's an experience which you can't find anywhere else. And uh, I really think that, especially as we move into Windows 8 on the desktop and Windows 8 on tablets, that Microsoft has pulled off something pretty incredible here, unifying their user experience across all screen sizes. If you're already rocking Windows 8 on the desktop and you pick up your phone, you, you're right back onto the live tiles. If you pick up your phone and think, oh, I wanna go to a larger device and you pick up a Surface or another Windows 8 tablet, you've got your live tiles. The metaphor for navigating your information is going to stay consistent. And that's something that even Apple hasn't been able to pull off. So big thumbs up to Microsoft, huge thumbs up to Nokia. I really like this device and I really think this is a great implementation of the Windows 8 aesthetic. And guys, be on the lookout for my full review of the Nokia Lumia 920. It's gonna be on yourtechreport.com. And uh, thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll catch you on the next one.